The home of the Sikh people is here in the state of the Punjab, in the northwestern corner of India, below the Himalayas, bordering Jammu and Kashmir to the north and Pakistan to the west. The Punjab is a very rich agricultural area growing wheat, rice, maize and cotton and has a thriving horticultural output. Once known as the breadbasket of India, it was partitioned in 1947 so that the greater part of the Punjab fell inside the border of Pakistan. The partition of India, which was an explosive period in the history of the subcontinent, led to an exodus of Sikhs and Hindus into the Indian Punjab, so that the history of the Punjab has long been connected with the Sikh people and their religion. The word Sikh means a disciple's practice of following and learning their Guru's instruction. Sikhism believes in one God, Hindus believe in 330 million gods and goddesses. Sikhism rejects caste distinctions so central to Hinduism. It rejects idolatry and asceticism and believes in the cycle of reincarnation. A person can be freed from having to reincarnate by living a righteous and socially constructive life. The spiritual capital of Sikhism is here in Amritsar, capital of the Punjab, and it is here that the Golden Temple is. The religion was founded by Guru Nanak in the year 1520, and it was consolidated by the Sikh's 10th spiritual leader, Guru Gobind Singh, who formalized religious practice in 1699. It was in 1699 that the Khalsa was formed, an organization that a person is initiated into and which upholds the beliefs and rules of Sikhism. The Khalsa, also known as the Organization of the Saint Soldier, was the religious, political and military organization of Sikhism. The 11th Guru of Sikhism is their eternally living Guru. It is their sacred book called the Guru Granth Sahib, celebrated here in the Golden Temple. The Guru Granth Sahib, their sacred book, advocates faith in and meditation on the name of the Creator, the unity of mankind, engagement in selfless service, striving for social justice for all, and honest conduct always in one's personal and professional life. Sikhism advocates the practice of Simran, which is a meditation on the words of the sacred book, the Guru Granth Sahib, expressed musically or through the repetition of God's name to oneself. Simran practice is intended to bring control over lust, rage, greed, attachment and conceit, these called the five thieves. Guru Nanak also taught that the practice of religious belief was more important than the belief itself, so that an active, creative and practical life of truthfulness, fidelity, self-control and purity is above the metaphysical truth. Therefore, a good man is one who knows and carries out the will of God.
Kelsa, the organization into which devout Orthodox Sikhs are richly admitted, developed from the reaction to oppression and violence brought against Sikh and Hindu by the Mughal invaders and rulers who controlled large parts of India between 1556 and 1707. Sikhism, which cherishes freedom of conscience and religion, cherished the holy men of Islam, the religion of the oppressors, and those of the Hindu religion, but fiercely resisted the Islamic administration and fought constantly for the respect of and recognition of itself and those that Sikhism protected in Sikh lands, centering on the Punjab. In 1716, Baba Banda Singh Bahadur and an army of 250 men took the Shibalik hills in northern India to put an end to the Islamic, Afghan and Mughal authority in India. Over the next 20 years, he and other Sikh leaders established an empire which became united under one man in 1801, King Ranjit Singh. The Khalsa became the military force that defended and held the territory together, consisting, it is told, of 70,000 cavalry and 250,000 infantry. The death of King Ranjit, who had held the Sikh Empire together through both diplomacy and military force, occurred at the same time that the British East India Company was expanding in India. The Punjab was both the last independent kingdom in India, and it was wealthy. Rivalry within the Sikh leadership and the British desire to expand led to the Anglo-Sikh Wars, 1845-46 and 1848-49, with the final defeat of the Sikhs at the Battle of Gujarat in today's Pakistan. On March the 30th, 1849, Duleep Singh held his last court at Lahore, where he signed away the claims to the Punjab. The wars gave both sides a lasting mutual respect for the courage and fighting ability of the other, whilst the conquering British took advantage of the cultural and religious sensitivities held by the Sikhs by recruiting from communities in the Punjab into the Punjab Irregular Force under British command. The Punjab was then run by the British until the Raj came to an end when Mountbatten presided over the withdrawal of power in India in 1947. More recently, in 1984, the Sikh people found themselves the centre of world attention when the Golden Temple complex was besieged by the forces of the Indian state. The Indian Army, the Central Reserve Police Force, the BSF, which is the Border Security Force, Punjab Police and the British Army Special Air Service. Operation Blue Star ordered by the Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, was a six-day operation in two parts, dealing with the militant separatist Sikhs in the Harmadir Sahib complex in Amritsar and the Punjab-wide sweep of the Sikhs in opposition to the Indian government. Jarnal Singh Bindranwali led the separatists who were advocating for the creation of an independent, separate Sikh state called Khalistan. The military operation led to the death of 83 government forces personnel with 249 injured and an official and probably well underestimated 493 militants and civilians killed according to human rights organizations. Sacred artifacts of the Sikh religion were taken by the CBI and the Sikh reference library was burned to the ground. Four months later, Indira Gandhi was assassinated in a revenge attack by two members of her bodyguard. Satwan Singh and Biant Singh were both Sikhs, one of whom was shot dead in the same incident, whilst the other was executed by the Indian state later. The killing of Gandhi on the 31st of October 1984 led to a further mass killing of thousands of Sikh people in pogroms led by members of Gandhi's Congress party. Anti-Sikh violence began two days after the assassination. Official government reports admit to 2,800 deaths, 2,100 of those in Delhi, but independent and credible sources put the numbers killed at 8,000. The Central Bureau of Investigation 
believes that the murder of Sikh people in Delhi was organised by senior Delhi police officials and by central government officials. In 2011, Human Rights Watch reported that the Indian government had yet to prosecute those responsible for the mass killings in 1984. Today the Sikh people number 25 million spread across the world. The resistance to the creation of Khalistan and the sacking of the Golden Temple complex in 1984. The failure of prosecution of decision makers behind the 1984 anti-Sikh pogroms. All have sustained and invigorated the Sikh argument for independence after centuries of resistance against oppression of freedom.